Hey guys, welcome back to Dad's Van. Today I'm going to be showing you how to connect a Yeti Link uh, car charging module to the um, Sprinter's main battery uh, so that you can charge the Yeti from the car's alternator while you're driving. Um, this is a really nice feature because when the battery is running low, the Yeti Link module will keep the battery uh, charged. It'll charge it up while you're driving. Um, and also when uh, you're parked and the van is off, the link module will help um, allow the Yeti battery to keep the uh, car battery charged and maintained as well if you've got another uh, charging source such as solar. To see what products I used, uh, check out the description um, of the YouTube video. I've got links to all the products there. Um, I do earn a small commission if you use those links, uh, but it doesn't cost you anything more and it does help keep me motivated to doing these videos. Uh, so thanks for your support and I'm looking forward to uh, showing you how to get this done. Alright, so I wanted to talk to you guys for a few minutes about um, how to make the cable that's going to connect the Yeti link to your Vans uh, starter battery. Um, Yeti makes some products that uh, you can purchase um, to make that connection. Um, they make a, a extension cable that's 12 feet that has the EC8 connectors um, for connecting into the Yeti link. And then they also make an adapter cable that has the EC8 connector on one end and uh, ring terminals on the other end. Um, I chose not to use those products for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, the extension cable is only about 12 feet, um, which wasn't long enough to go from the back of the van where I have the uh, Yeti lithium battery to the um, starter battery connection. Um, also, because that cable has the EC8 connectors on the ends, um, you can't easily route it uh, through the walls of the van if you want to keep it out of the way. Um, so that's something to keep in mind uh, when trying to decide. Um, the good news is you can pretty easily build uh, this cable yourself using just one uh, product that Yeti uh, makes. Um, and the way to do that is to purchase uh, the Yeti uh, male EC8 to uh, ring terminal adapter cable. Um, I don't have that cable here because it's already installed in the van. I didn't shoot the video at the time of making it. Uh, but I'll do my best to explain uh, what I did. Um, so what you're going to want to do um, is take that male EC8 uh, to ring terminal adapter cable and on one side it's going to have the male EC8 connector. Um, that's what's going to plug in to the back of the Yeti link terminal. On the other end it's going to have uh, two ring terminals uh, coming out. Uh, there'll be one that's a pair of cables, uh, black and green for negative and the other will be red and white for positive. Um, and we're actually going to cut those off. Um, and after cutting, so like here's an example, I cut this one off. This is the, the uh, green and black uh, negative ring terminal cable. I cut that off. Um, and do the same for the red and white. And what that's going to leave you with is coming out of that adapter cable, you're going to have um, a green and black uh, pair of uh, 10 gauge wires and then a red and white pair of 10 gauge wires coming off uh, where you cut these ring adapters off. Um, and in order to uh, then route from that adapter cable all the way up to the front of the van uh, where the starter battery connection is, you're going to need to connect some um, heavy gauge wire. Here I used a 6 gauge wire, um, red for positive, black for negative. So you're going to get some of that. About 25 feet is enough to get all the way to the battery compartment. And then um, the trick from there is um, on one end of that you're going to need to uh, do use a butt connector um, to make the connection to the Yeti link adapter uh, cables. So for example what's going to what you're going to have coming out of the Yeti link adapter cable you're going to have a a black and green wire like this um, and you're going to take your your black um, you're going to take your your six gauge wire and 
uh, use a butt splice connector to connect that to the, the two black uh, and green wires coming out of the adapter cable. Um, I don't know why Yeti chose to use uh, two cables instead of one thick cable, but that's, that's just how the adapter cable was built. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing uh, with the positive cable. So you want to take the uh, red and white uh, wires coming out of the adapter cable, the two 10 gauge wires coming out of there, and uh, butt splice those to a single 6 gauge wire um, that you're going to run up to the front of the van. Um, and to do that, um, to make that connection, you can get um, a six gauge butt splice connector like this. Um, and then, you know, you put the, the two 10 gauge wires in one side, you put the single six gauge wire coming out the other side, and then you crimp that down, heat shrink, heat shrink wrap it um, to make sure that um, it holds up well. The other thing I strongly suggest doing um, is uh, routing your black and white or your red and black cabling through a protective sleeve. Um, this stuff's really cheap. Uh, you can get it um, online. Uh, I bought 100 feet of it. This is 3 eighths of an inch. And it will stretch and fit both the red and black cable inside that sheath. And this is really good when you're routing it through the van walls because that way, um, as you're driving, there's vibration. You don't deal with uh, the possibility of wearing through the cable insulation. Um, so definitely pick some of that, that up. Um, feed the wires through there um, before you route it uh, from the back of the van to the front of the van. And then the last thing I'll mention is um, if you want to reuse uh, these ring terminals that, that you cut off the adapter cable, you can do that. Um, I actually did reuse the red and white one uh, on the other end up at the starter battery. Uh, again, it, it, you do it the same way. You just um, use a butt splice connection uh, to connect the, the two 10 gauge wires into a single six gauge wire, crimp that down. Um, so you can definitely use these or you can just buy a new ring terminal um, and crimp it on to the end of your six gauge wire. That'll work as well, either way. Um, I have links to these products uh, in the video description. Um, I do get a small commission if you use the links, uh, but it does help keep me motivated to uh, make these videos, and it doesn't cost you anything more. So thanks for your support, and good luck building that cable. All right, I just want to show you real quick where we routed the Yeti Link cabling. So it comes from out the back of the Yeti Link module, runs uh, behind these panels here, and then right here, it goes up, comes out the top over here, crosses over, drops down, and goes in under the driver's seat. All right, after taking out any floor mats or weather tech mats, the next thing we're gonna to need to do is uh, remove this trim piece here uh, that's held down by three Torx T25 bolts. Um, to speed up the process, we have a drill bit here that'll uh, hook into our T20 bit, and that's what we're gonna to use to take this off. with the trim piece removed, next we're going to remove this plastic flooring. And that's going to expose the cover to where the battery is located. 
All right, to remove the battery cover, we're gonna use a Torx T30 bit. And then you can also remove this positive battery plastic cover. All right, with the battery cover off and the positive uh, connection cover off, um, you can see where the battery terminals are. All right, in order to get this um, fuse block out here, we're gonna need to get more slack in these lines. So what I'm gonna have to do is pull up this middle section of floor. All right, to get up this middle section of flooring, we're gonna have to remove this trim piece here, and that's got three bolts that are Torx T20. So unscrew those, and then this piece will pop out. And you should be able to slide these out. That helps take the parking brake cover off too. expose this raceway that goes up to the dash controls. Alright, so we can see that this floor piece is, is all one piece connected with the passenger side. So we may just go ahead and remove that whole thing. But in order to get to the battery here, we are going to have to pull back some more of the flooring. Such as <clears throat> styrofoam piece.
All right, now to get this raceway off, we're gonna have to remove some bolts that go into the floor. There's a couple located under these caps here. Remove those caps. One here, similar on the other side. The other cap doesn't seem to be hiding anything. So under here is where we're going to find the wiring. I think this other piece is just duct work to allow air to be circulated. Well, I've never felt any air coming out. There's a cap on the floor here that loose but that might come in handy someday all right so this raceway is what we need to get up get some So we've now fed the um, positive and negative from the goal uh, zero Yeti link all the way up through into the back of the driver's seat base, up through the white plastic cable track, and now we're in the battery tray area. And what we're going to be doing is hooking the negative terminal to the negative on the battery.
All right, so we've got the other half of our. So basically, I'm putting an 80 amp. Basically, I'm putting an 80 amp circuit breaker in here um, on the battery side. I made this little jumper that's going to connect to the battery on the aux sides where I'm plugging in the feed from the goal zero. So I've chosen to, to hook this 80 amp circuit breaker up directly to the battery here. I could have gone into this fuse block and just bought a, a connecting bar. I might go back and do that in the future, but for now this will work. All right, so we want to get access to this um, factory fuse holder here that is, uh, should have some extra slots available. So we're going to go ahead and using a half inch socket, we're going to unhook that.
Now if you don't have a metric bit, um, you can use a 732 and just kind of widen this out a little bit more. I mean a quarter inch is probably a little too big, but somewhere in between 732 and a quarter inch will work. So using that 732s bit and kind of widening it out a little more than 732s, that'll that'll make it a good fit on the fuse bar. All right, so we've got our six gauge wire coming from our bus bar under the driver's seat to the fuse panel block, and for you know a two foot run of six gauge wire, we can uh, it can definitely handle up to. 100 amps so we're gonna protect that wire with a 100 amp fuse again we had to open up open up the holes on this 100 amp fuse to get it to work um, but once those are opened up they will slide down onto the studs and go ahead and connect our power feed wire there and then reattach these nuts to hold that in place. And it's a 10 millimeter to tighten those. Okay, we're all set. Just be aware if you're going to do a cable run of a longer length, you know, more than a couple feet, make sure you check the wire gauge um, amperage charts. In my case, 100 amp uh, over a couple feet was okay for six gauge wire. If you need to go further for any reason, you're probably going to need thicker wire. goes under the driver's seat connects to the positive side of uh, this bus and then that bus is feeding two things uh, one is a circuit breaker uh, that I've got the Yeti connected to and the other one is a circuit breaker for 
um, a stereo amplifier that we'll be hooking up later. And then um, the ground side of the uh, Yeti cable, ground side goes to the negative bus, and then this negative bus is uh, grounded uh, using this grounding post uh, under the driver's seat. Here's our Yeti 1400. Um, it's already set up with uh, solar charging coming in through the Anderson power pole, as well as our shore power connections using the additional input ports. And we also have a Yeti Link expansion model. And that's what we've got now wired up to the starter battery with the 80 amp circuit breaker. This is the extension cable um, connector that um, I cut the um, connectors off of and tied into the six gauge wire that I'm running all the way up to the battery. All right, so first thing we need to do is make sure that the link module is in car mode. We do that by Taking a, a thin tool and pushing it into the reset. And if all the bars are flashing like that, that means that Yeti's in car mode. If they cycle up like that, that means it's in tank mode. So we want it in car mode, so we'll push five times. And then it should flash, indicating that it's now in car mode. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug the connector into the back of the link module. All right, now we're ready to go start up the van and see how this thing charges up. All right, we started up the van now and we're seeing some charging power come in. Looks like we got about 246 watts. That one's still going up, 248. All right, so now we can see um, the battery much lower. This is charging much higher, about 400 watts. So we'll um, take this for a drive and see how it charges up. And then I uh, just wanted to see if I add solar, uh, if we can boost the uh, charging even higher. So we're at There we go. Solar is boosting us even higher. 530. So it will combine alternator charging with solar to recharge this battery. Pretty impressive. All right, that concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found the video useful, please like the video or subscribe to our channel. Um, again, I have a lot of links to the products uh, we used um, in the description. Um, I do get a commission if you use those links, but it doesn't cost you anything more. So thank you for supporting our channel. Um, again, I want to remind you that anytime you're dealing with electrical, make sure you do your research. If you don't feel comfortable, ask questions. Um, on, on my uh, channel or on the community. There's a lot of information out there, but uh, you want to make sure you do this right and everything electrically be safe. Um, so again, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to answer. Thanks and uh, have fun out there.